My research involves the characterization uh, of new minerals, minerals which have never before been found. Uh, it is surprising that as long as mineralogy has been around, since the ancient Greeks really, uh, that we're still finding new minerals. And today we're finding actually more new minerals than we've ever found before. Uh, more than a hundred new minerals are discovered, characterized every year, and I'm very much involved in that. This cabinet right here contains many of the things that I've described or I'm still working on. Here, for example, uh, is a drawer uh, full of minerals uh, that I'm working on from a deposit right here in California, not too far from the, the town of Baker. Uh, it includes a whole host of interesting uh, associations. Uh, these minerals are mostly uh, lead copper tellurides, uh, or tellurates actually, uh, and uh, really quite exciting. Every drawer here in this cabinet has another array of interesting new minerals. Uh, people wonder, they ask me in fact, uh, where do you find these new minerals? Uh, in fact, I don't find most of them myself. Other people do, and they send them to me. Uh, if they can't identify them, uh, for me to do the work to determine what they are and whether they, in fact, are new. Of course, the work involves more than just looking at specimens like this, uh, or under the microscope, because mostly they are microscopic. It involves the use of some more sophisticated equipment, which I've got here in the other room. This is my primary research tool. Uh, this is an x-ray diffractometer. And this is something that we use both to identify minerals as well as to study their internal uh, structure, how the atoms within them combine to make them what they are. Uh, the specimen that you see on here is uh, right at the end of a little spindle there, you cannot actually see it unless you look perhaps up at the monitor there uh, because it only is uh, maybe a few tenths of a millimeter across. Uh, right now I'm running a powder diffraction on it, uh, which is how we identify it. It produces a pattern uh, on the screen behind you, which is read by a computer. And from that pattern, we can actually compare it to other patterns of all known compounds uh, and determine what it is. Of course, if we determine that it doesn't match anything, then there's a chance that we have a new mineral. There are many other tests that we have to run uh, on the composition, for example. This cannot give you the composition itself. Uh, we've got other tools uh, for studying that. In fact, uh, we have a scanning electron microscope with an energy dispersive analyzer elsewhere in the museum that I use for uh, studying the chemical composition. Uh, another technique that we can employ using this same instrument is single crystal x-ray diffraction and from the data that we get from that we can determine where the atoms are located within the crystal structure. And that really is what defines what the mineral is. What those atoms are and how they fit together determine what any crystalline substance is. Here on the bulletin board are diagrams showing just some of the crystal structures that I've worked on. Uh, all of these are minerals. Uh, some of them, probably the majority of them actually, are brand new minerals. Uh, minerals with names such as joteite, uh, actually properly pronounced hoteite. Uh, here's ophirite, uh, Werner Bauerite, named after uh, actually my fir the first professor I had in crystallography way back when. Uh, and many other interesting uh, minerals uh, with structures that never cease to amaze me. This is really part of the sense of discovery that I feel when I work on new minerals, is, is really seeing for the first time uh, how they are put together. And when you 
when you determine a crystal structure like this one here that's never before been seen, either in a natural material or a synthetic material, uh, you really get a sense of awe. Uh, the, the way that this one is put together is really quite remarkable without getting into greater detail. The research that we do here is really the heart of the museum. What people see on display, what you see if, as you go through the drawers, uh, is obviously a big part of what a museum is. But the core of a natural history museum is the research that goes on behind the scenes. Uh, the staff of experts in many different disciplines who are working to redefine their sciences, to uh, find new organisms, to find new compounds, uh, to add to scientific knowledge. That's what makes working in a natural history museum so exciting. Uh, of course, I have to say, I still get a real, you know, sense of excitement just walking through the gallery when I see a group of kids looking in a display case and pointing out a mineral and saying, come look at this one, look how, look how neat this one is. Of course, behind the scenes, here I am looking at things that they will probably never know about. Uh, fairly esoteric compounds, but ones which perhaps someday could change everyone's lives.